So, uh, is it visible? My yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, shall I start? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, Egyptian vultures, uh, the silent warriors of nature. Uh, I have worked on Egyptian vultures during my PhD thesis, and I've just submitted my PhD thesis on Egyptian vultures. And uh, thank you, uh, WCB Research Foundation, for inviting me to speak about my topic here at this platform. And uh, so I'll start with the background. Uh, Egyptian vultures, Neophron pernopterus, pernopterus. Egyptian vulture is a medium-sized raptor and opportunist scavenger feeding on large variety of dead animals, including large carcasses, small and medium-sized vertebrates, and sometimes taking live prey insects and human waste on rubbish dumps. The species is very much smaller and lighter in comparison to other vulture species. And this is the only living member of genus Neophron. There are three subspecies of Neophron pernopterus in the world. Neophron pernopterus gingenianus, which is found in India and Nepal, Neophron pernopterus majorensis on the Canary Island, and Neophron pernopterus pernopterus, which is there, which is uh, present in the rest of the species distribution. Neophron pernopterus pernopterus and gingenianus are there in India. And uh, luckily, both the subspecies we have in our Uttar Pradesh also. And the Egyptian vulture is sometimes called Pharaoh's chicken due to the fact that it is so often seen sculptured on the ancient monuments of Egypt. They are considered sacred in Egyptian culture and in other folklore of the world also. Because of consistent and steep declines throughout its range, the species was uplifted from least concern to endangered in the IUCN Red List in 2007 according to BirdLife International 2008. And this, uh, this is the pre previously published red list assessment. You can see. Now, in general, the occurrence of vulture species, there are, uh, we all know that there are 23 species of vultures in the world, of which seven are new world vultures and 16 species are old world vultures. Of the 16 species of old world vultures, nine are there in India, and of nine, eight are there in UP, except bearded vulture, that, that is Gypetus barbatus. Vulture species in UP, these are the vulture species uh, uh, found in UP, the residential as well as migratory, and Egyptian vulture is one of them. Uh, this is the morphology of Egyptian vulture. You can see the flying adult, uh, the adult, and the closer view of the head region. We can see the hook beak, uh, which is a specific foraging advantage for them to feed upon the carcass and near the viscera in and internal organs. The, this is the picture showing adult and juvenile of Egyptian vulture. Uh, we can see that the adults are completely white with a certain blackish uh, feathers, while the juveniles are completely different from adults. They are black with a gray face and the adults are having the yellow face. Uh, sometimes, in fact, uh, most of the times, people uh, consider, uh, misunderstand uh, about their identity. And when we visited to our sites, where the people were uh, uh, considered them as black kites only, because they are very similar to black kites, the juveniles. So uh, knowing about their difference is very important. important. And uh, now the vultures in mythology. In the uh, sacred epic Ramayana also, we know that Jatayu was a vulture, which uh, believed to have informed Lord Ram the direction in which Sita ha had been abducted by Ravan. In Parsi culture in India and in Tib uh, and Tibetans practice uh, sky burial where human corpses are offered to the vultures. Uh, there is a Gitraj Parvat, which means the hill of vultures, which is a hill of religious, archaeological, and ecological importance situated in Devraj Nagar village of MP. And interesting, uh, one interesting uh, point about Egyptian vulture is that there is a temple in Tirukalu Kundram, Tamil Nadu, which is famous for the pair of Egyptian vultures, which nest there from centuries. 
and every day for noon the birds come to the temple to have a daily gift of food offered by the saints there and if due to some reasons they do not come then uh, they believe that there is sinner among their among them who had has to redeem their sins so uh, not only in indian scriptures but in other cultures also egyptian vultures are uh, considered sacred in egyptian mythology specifically that's why they are named as egyptian vulture because they are very uh, significant in egyptian culture and they are considered as the symbol of purity and motherhood and in turkish mythology also as well and there are uh, other mythologies of uh, around the world in which Egypt, egyptian cultures are considered sacred uh, there is an article of mine in savers wildlife magazine which which uh, summarizes all the uh, uh all the places where egyptian cultures are considered sacred so uh now uh, some specific foraging advantages for egyptian vultures uh, are uh, bare skin the face is devoid of hair so the bare skin prevents blood and food from sticking to it the long and thin beak uh, which uh, which is uh, a, which helps to easily tear off the small pieces of meat left by the larger scavengers and the thin beak can reach up to the areas deep inside through narrow spaces between the bones they have a non selective diet that is they can feed upon a variety of food which is available for them no unlike other vulture species which uh, are uh, like in case of red headed vulture they always uh, need a fresh carcass to feed upon they have a specific choice for their feeding but in egyptian vulture it is not like that they are uh, they are very opportunistic and they can feed upon a variety of uh, food uh, which are present in the surrounding so this might be one of the reason that they are surviving more than other vulture species here active hunting in addition to the food available for them they also look and hunt for food and sometimes observe preying uh, upon rats mice lizards and tortoises fish insects and other pests also uh the standard methods which we have used during our study are like uh, the pounce at the fixed locations uh, the most widely reported survey technique that involves counting of raptors from fixed locations is counting raptors as they pass sites where they congregate during migration and uh, for abundance for distribution also we can opt this method we adopt a total count method at the active feeding sites to include the maximum possible individuals in the census the dump sites slaughter houses and bone mills factories in all the seasons were surveyed the counts were made in the morning afternoon and evening hours to include the maximum count and distance was uh, maintained to ensure that birds are not disturbed and we took photographs also for future references so the uh, population monitoring has been done through regular counting counting has been done uh, using point count method at the breeding sites and roosting sites while road uh, road transects were conducted throughout the study area because the study area uh, is very large that is whole uttar pradesh so a road transect method was most feasible uh, field identification was done by using field guides uh, point count method Ralph et al reviewed point count methods and provided practical recommendations for their use uh, it is also used uh, which involves point counts along the uh, randomly selected road transects uh, for road transect method uh, in our study the sampling was uh, done by road transect method to identify or locate the nesting and roosting sites each road transect was covered with the help of four wheeler along the existing roads and the direct observations were made in range of binoculars covering both the sides of the road because uh, the like area is very large so uh, and all the uh, necessary parameters like uh, gps locations and um, other other roosting and nesting sites if they are uh, uh, they are uh, they are present they were searched and identified the search is also completed across the rural landscapes and old buildings water tanks and temples especially for the occurrence of nesting sites of egyptian vultures because in case of egyptian vultures we have observed maximum number of nests on the old ancient temples in the breeding territory so uh, those were also uh, uh, searched and scanned the factors which affected the population size was uh, were the distance from water body from rubbish dump from dense vegetation 
from uh, nearest human settlement, from road, and the landscape type was also recorded like agricultural, urban, semi-urban, and forest. The season was also recorded so as to know about the seasonal influence of their population. Uh, this is the picture showing the nest material differentiation which we have done during our study. We have uh, deconstructed the abandoned nest uh, which was taken from a now and we identified different materials which we which I can I'll share in my uh, next slides. We have recorded the largest population in Lucknow division and smallest in Meerut. Uh, administrative divisions showed significant differences in adult population levels and maximum indi individuals were observed in winter season, followed by summer and minimum in monsoon. This is the box plot which shows the population differences and di divisions. We took, uh, we did division-wise survey because it was very difficult to uh, cover all the uh, uh, area of study area. Uh, that is Uttar Pradesh. This is the glimpse of study sites, uh, Egyptian vultures roosting with black kites in Aligarh. You can see the juveniles of black kites and Egyptian vultures here, very similar. And uh, roosting at the brick kiln and electric pylon at Lakhimpur Khiri. The, these are Egyptian vultures on the roof of sugar mill at Lakhimpur. Egyptian vultures in agricultural field at Tunnau. Uh, waste from slaughterhouse uh, in Bareilly. This is the waste ground of the slaughterhouse in Bareilly and we have observed Egyptian vultures feeding along with the feral do dogs there. For uh, feeding uh, incentives, maximum population of Egyptian vultures were observed near the rubbish dumps. And uh, we can say that rubbish dumps and slaughterhouses are the driving force for the presence of Egyptian vultures in UP. For feeding time preferred, we have opted several standard methods like Altman and Kamble, which uh, involved uh, uh, counting of Egyptian vultures during different uh, time of the day. And we have seen that uh, Egyptian, uh, we also did feeding time budget uh, study. And we have observed that Egyptian vultures spend maximum time for foraging during afternoon, followed by morning and evening hours, because uh, this is the most suitable time for them uh, to feed upon that is in the afternoon. For foraging behavior, we have observed several types of activities during the foraging. Uh, we have observed tool using behavior, uh, coprophagy, sunning. Uh, they sometimes stand still while feeding. They, uh, they have seen uh, roosting, preening, yellow preening, ground scratching, looking around to peck the meat. And sometimes they walk only, uh, they socially interact with other species also like uh, dogs, uh, black kites, crows, and they do dust bathing also as sometimes uh, um, for longer hours they have seen doing the dust bathing, circling and soaring uh, over the feeding site, fallen, fallen angel display. Uh, it was a kind of display they have uh, uh, displayed when they, they felt the threat nearby and parental care. We have observed uh, parental care to a great extent and we have seen that both the individuals both the parents uh, did parental care during the breeding season and then formation flying behavior with flying uh, flying in pair uh, social foraging we have also done uh, observations on social foraging activity and during the study the egyptian vultures were observed to be feeding along with black kite house crow cattle egret and dog the significance of these association is also discussed. And this is the occurrence of associated species. And we have observed maximum number of cattle egret population uh, socially feeding with Egyptian vultures, followed by black kite, crows, and dogs. Population size of the Egyptian vulture shows positive correlation with black kite, house crow, and dog. And cattle egret population was negatively correlated. However, only house crow population was significantly correlated with Egyptian vulture. Despite strong correlation of black kite and Egyptian vulture population, the correlation was insignificant. Positive correlation between Egyptian vulture, house crow, and dog was expected as all of them feed on the cantas. The field studies uh, showed that Egyptian vultures are social feeders. And while analyzing all the species feeding together, it can be inferred that there is an overall feeding relationship in a guild and research also suggests that there may be some positive and some negative effects of social feeding with regards to Egyptian vultures. 
The work will establish the studied regions as the important feeding site that harbors these species of conservational importance. And we can see here in this slide, the uh, Egyptian vultures socially feeding with crows, black kites, cattle eagles, and dogs. This is, uh, these are the pictures taken from Unnao, which is the prominent feeding site for them. These are the adults, sub-adults, and juveniles at Unnao. These are the adults uh, and sub-adults roosting on Mahani trees in Raya For a breeding ecology, we observe that the nesting is generally found in the vicinity of human dwellings, utilizing the different nest materials from the surroundings. The, they have seen utilizing different types of nest materials and, and anthropogenic nest materials also. Uh, uh, the waste generated by humans, they have uh, utilized them for their nest construction. And the nests are made on ancient temples, trees, electricity pylons, water tanks, etc. The nests are very large, untidy, and quite complex. The eggs are dirty white with brown patches and laid in between March and April. This is the observed breeding activity of Egyptian vulture. And uh, we have seen display during October to March and then population in, from November to April. The nest with egg from March, April, nest with young in March, April, and nest with incub incubating birds during August to May. And very recently fledged in juveniles during September. This was the uh, basic uh, chart to show the nesting uh, season. Egyptian vultures. Uh, ne uh, nesting points usually located in undisturbed areas away from the human population, but close to good quality habitat that is close to food and water resource. And nest made were closer to specific nest. Uh, for nest material use, we uh, know that selection of nest sites, nest material, and nest substrate are important in determining the breeding success of most of the bird species. And the design of the nest varies among different taxa. Some build a small cup-shaped nest, while some prepare a huge complex elliptical nest or platform nest. The nest of the Egyptian vulture is open, elliptical shaped platform nest consisting of different types of nest materials. And it is quite complex than other raptor species. I'll show in the next slides. We have observed maximum number of anthropogenic material from their nest followed by animal matter and then plant matter and some were un unidentified materials. And this is a table showing the constituent of Egyptian vulture nest layers. We can see that different types of nest materials they have used. There, are, there were 15 types of which we have observed. Uh, old buildings such as temples and tall trees like ficus species were the most important nesting sites. Egyptian vultures preferred nest close to human habitation and food water resource. Most of the nest material was anthropogenic, as we have seen. The two structured layer of the nest provided it the strength and durability and prevented it from falling apart. From this study, it can be inferred that during the nest building process, the hard and sharp materials appear to be the most effective material for the protection of nest against predators. And they have used a very, uh, they have used uh, uh, bones for their nest decoration, and they have used uh, the uh, other sharp material, uh, sharp materials like uh, baboon sticks for the for the protection. And we have seen that the old nests are often reused, and one of uh, many of our uh, breeding sites at one of the uh, breeding sites, which is. The most important for us, uh, there uh, we have see, we we have in, uh, interviewed with the local people there, and they are saying that the Egyptian vultures are nesting at that particular place from around 37 or more years, so they reuse their nest. They are undisturbed, and this is the GIS map of UP showing all the breeding sites studied. This is a glimpse of breeding site. We can see the sites are quite uh, peaceful and with, hu uh, with huge vegetation cover. And uh, there was a water, there were different water bodies were there, artificial and natural for the water. And for food, uh, they have utilized the areas which were, where the villagers used to throw uh, the, their dead cattle. 
and this was a nest which we have observed on the water tank and this uh, on the right uh, side you can see that different materials which they, they have used for the nest material construction for the nest construction this is a parent hatching the egg and the photo of the egg was taken with the help of the drone because uh, it was uh, uh, unable to get the picture but we have uh, kept uh, we have ensured we have kept in our mind that we have we do we do not we did not want to disturb them so we did all the study uh, keeping this in mind and from a, a proper distance this was the courtship display we have observed in the breeding territory roosting in pair during the breeding season uh, the water body in the vicinity of nesting and roosting substrate were there the threats, um, different types of threats for uh, were assessed, like electrocution, uh, roosting or nesting site destruction, feral dogs, religious and uh, spiritual and cultural myth, which were prevalent, and the lack of awareness. Electrocution, habitat site destruction, feral dog threat were assessed on the basis of frequency of occurrence, while other threats were the direct observation. Awareness was assumed to be uh, threatening the vulture if people are harming, destroying nests because of lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge was judged if people were unable to identify or misjudge a species. <clears throat> at, uh, 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 at one of our sites, uh, I have observed that, uh, I have recorded that, that actually, that uh, one person was there, he said that he is destroying their uh, eggs because uh, every time they lay eggs in the nest because uh, he uh, considered that these are the uh, these are the larger birds which are harmful for the smaller birds and they kill other smaller birds so that's why he used to destroy the eggs of egyptian vulture so this uh, this was very threatening because they are globally endangered and every egg is every egg matters every individual matters so Threats like these, uh, the, the lack of awareness we have observed maximum during our study, because uh, uh, people, if they do, they do not know about their identification, they, the, if the people are not knowing how important they are to nature, then uh, they'll, they'll never try to uh, protect them, or they'll never try to think or bother about them, the species. Uh, we have seen electrocution at some of the places, then habitat destruction uh, of uh, the roosting trees were destroyed at some places. Feral dogs, number of aggressions shown towards the species, which disturbs their activity, actually. Because feral dogs uh, were uh, like uh, uh, at the feeding sites, we have seen that Egyptian vultures used to wait for hours for, uh, to get their turn to feed upon the caracas. And sometimes feral dogs were very aggressive to them as well as other species also. This is the glimpse of threats observed in the study area. Electrocution, increased population of feral dogs. Uh, sometimes the natural factors are there, the natural calamities like storms and other, uh, other factors uh, destroy the nest. So conservation, uh, the major tools of vulture conservation in UP uh, and in India uh, are the vulture restaurants, vulture sanctuaries, vulture conservation and breeding centers, vulture awareness campaign, and vulture, vulture safe zones, uh, which are uh, being established in the region. For the uh, community participation, uh, we have observed that community, community participation play, plays a vital role in the development of capacity building for the management and utilization of the resources in a sustainable way. The human impact on global environment has triggered a mass extinction event of significance on a geological time scale as well as causing widespread changes in the global distribution of organisms. The mass awareness focuses on four key approaches, the campaigns, participatory learning, informal education, and formal school-based interventions. Uh, very important implication of our study was that the respondents started showing great interest in knowing about Egyptian vulture and their conservation when we started interacting with them. 
And this was very effective as overall in UP, the lack of awareness was found as one of the major causes of negligence towards the species. And the key informants were very helpful during the interview and involvement of local community has proved very much beneficial for the study. These are responsible for generating the first hand information on, on Egyptian vultures in the study areas. And I have a, a team of volunteers of local people at the study sites. Uh, and the team is uh, continuously interacting with me and telling me about the status of the nest. And if there is any threat, they, they, uh, they, they immediately call me and they update me about their status. What can be done to save? So uh, uh, protection of habitat is very important. Uh, other than uh, like for other vulture species, Diclofenac is responsible for the mass decline. But in case of Egyptian vultures, so far, uh, there are no research papers or documents uh, uh, which are saying that Diclofenac is affecting Egyptian vulture population. Uh, there are other factors also which affect their population. And like uh, their habitat destruction, we can protect their habitats, their breeding and roosting sites. Uh, we, uh, we should promote the monitored tourism, like uh, uh, the old ancient sites, which are important nesting sites for them. Uh, they, they must be uh, under observation. They must be uh, monitored. There must be monitored tourism is, if there is any tourism activity there. There should be proper coordination between different departments, like forest department, veterinary department, zoo, archaeological department, education department, tourism department, and agricultural department, etc. So that uh, uh, overall, we can uh, we can join our hands to protect these species from danger. What we are doing, uh, we are doing research and education. We are uh, we are going for publication and dissemination of research work, which are done to every section and at every platform like national or international, uh, mass awareness at various levels through workshops, sensors, interactive programs at local level. We also publish and distribute awareness material in different language, uh, like in English, in Hindi, and its distribution in schools and colleges. We go for regular monitoring of the potential sites. Uh, rescue operation for injured vultures should also be there if, if it should be promoted. And conducting workshops and awareness programs involving every levels of community must be there. This is a glimpse of uh, workshop and training programs uh, at Katanyagat Wildlife Sanctuary among forest officials. I have. Uh, delivered a talk. It was just, not just a talk. Uh, I have interacted with them and most of them were uh, very uh, like they they knew about uh, most of them uh, knew about vultures but they were not very specific for uh, know, uh, knowing Egyptian vultures. So uh, interacting with them uh, it was very important because uh, some information they have and other information we have. So there should be proper distribute exchange of information like uh, initiatives are always uh, said in our during training programs and every uh, workshops that they, we must share our information at every level. Uh, among bird watchers also, uh, I've talked about Egyptian vultures and their threats and their uh, roosting nesting sites like how to protect them, how to uh, not disturb them. Uh, a lecture on Egyptian vultures among girls of Kasturba Kanya Mahavidyalaya. This slide is very important for me because in uh, this Kasturba Kanya Mahavidyalaya, girls were very active. And uh, this, this was the only uh, school where, I, uh, where when I asked about Egyptian vultures, they were knowing. Uh, most of the girls knew about Egyptian vultures and that was very surprising for me. So. Uh, sometimes you uh, come across at the uh, the point where you realize that how uh, uh, how active the rural students are than the urban students, urban school students, and this is awareness among uh, common people at now. Uh, on International Vulture Awareness Day, we uh, celebrate the day 
by organizing our lab, Biodiversity and Wildlife Conservation Lab, Department of Zoology, University of Lucknow. We uh, every year organize International Vulture Awareness Day and different programs based on vultures and their identification and their conservation. A team of active volunteers, capacity building. Uh, we have made a team of active volunteers for uh, the information regarding Egyptian vultures. Volunteers are in continuous contact during the entire study until date. We keep updating regarding any information as I have said. This is the awareness material on Egyptian vulture, uh, which I have prepared, prepared for in Hindi for the uh, local people around the nesting sites through print media, awareness through any uh, media, uh, print media, electronic media, through any medium is important. And we must do as much awareness as we can because um, it is very important. If either through radio station, through uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, through various uh, uh, platform we can uh, do our part like which we can do uh, by sitting in our home also like in the covid period we uh, we have uh, i have uh, spoken with students online so it's very important to aware people it is the responsibility of every wildlife researcher to disseminate the results of the work to the common people not because science is a public knowledge but also to gain the confidence and support from the common people if researchers hope to continue being supported by local people and other institutions, they need to educate the public about vultures, their importance, their need, the need to conserve and study them. And by revealing the scale of threats and by planning the future conservation activities, the study will contribute to support the conservation of Egyptian vulture in big part of its global range. Strong in-situ conservation program is equally required with the present ex-situ conservation programs going on for vulture conservation, the glimpse of awareness activity. Where we interacted with local people as much as we could. Uh, this is the first vulture restaurant at Lalitpur in Uttar Pradesh, which was initiated uh, by Professor Amita Kanajia, but later on it was uh, not running properly. And so the it, it, it is not in working condition right now. These are the publications um, and the awards which I've received. Uh, the acknowledgement, I'm thankful to each and every sector uh, for my PhD and for my work. Uh, I, and it was a very inspiring uh, that the WCB, Dr. Nishit Dharaya sir, and WCB Research Foundation, uh, uh, they have uh, motivated, uh, Dr. Nishit Dharaya motivated me to do more and more work in any condition and to not, and to never give up. So I'm thankful to each and every one of you to patiently for listening my talk so patiently. Thank you so much. Very informative talk, Shivangi, ma'am. Thank you. Pilar. Yes. Thank you for this interesting session, ma'am. Thank you, Pitanya. Um, now we come to this question answer session. Uh, yeah. uh, you can unmute your mic and ask, or else you can write the question in your, in the chat section. So please, over to the participants. <laughs> 